Our New Testament reading for this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It is the story of Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him to her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted in many things, by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Thank you to Francie and to Jose Luis for your music this morning. I love roller guitar, so I'm feeling especially blessed this morning, so thank you for that. It is good to be here with you. I love Sunday mornings, and I am so glad to be in the house of God together. I'm especially grateful for your music and for this reminder that God is a God who moves through so many different forms of music and different languages, and I am grateful for that. Let's pray together. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know if you've ever played this game, the TV character personality game. It's kind of a popular thing to do with TV sitcoms, especially ones that sort of depict a, a group of people, a group of friends. So take a show of Friends, for instance. Kind of try to match up your personality with the characters on the show. You know, are you a Rachel or a Monica? Are you a Ross or a Joey? Or maybe Seinfeld. Are you a Jerry? Or are you a George? Or do you think you're a Jerry, but really you are a Kramer at heart? It's also popular with Disney characters, of course. And trust me, the internet is full of little quizzes you can take and find out how you match up. The Disney version kind of goes like this. Which princess, which heroine fits you best? Or which lovable villain? Or perhaps my personal favorite, if you had to describe your personality as a mix between a Disney princess and a Disney villain, which would you choose? I'm a mix between Belle from Beauty and the Beast and Yzma from Emperor's New Group, but that's neither here nor there, and you can all do a Google on that after the service. Today's gospel story often leads to the biblical version of the TV character personality. Are you a Martha? Or are you a Mary? Are you more like the frantic hostess? Or the one sitting calmly at Jesus' feet? And as sure as I know that I am like Belle, the Disney princess who loves nothing more than a good book and just a library that is expansive, I know that I am. Those group projects at work or at school, the ones who love having people. 
favorite biblical story. I have a lot of questions about it. I've always had a lot of questions about it. It makes me feel some type of way. It evokes a particular emotional reaction, which is why it's a good story for me to read repeatedly. It discomforts me and challenges me, which is usually a sign that God is trying to tell me something. So maybe you are like me and God is trying to get our attention this morning. So going beneath the surface level of the text, I do wonder what is really at issue here for Jesus. Because I want to first be clear about what this text is not saying. It is not saying that passive study is better than action. We'll talk more about this during our second hour today, but last weekend I was at a racial justice summit discussing issues of racism in the Boys Town neighborhood. And I was reminded by some of the speakers that a lot of churches get stuck in a loop of studying and planning around issues of injustice. They study and plan and study and plan and study and plan and never really stage. And if you study and plan long enough, do you notice that whatever it is you were studying and planning has kind of passed and gone out of date and you have to start the whole process again? So this text is not an endorsement of a Christian lifestyle that remains stagnant, that examines society without ever taking action. Indeed, Jesus values the importance of action and especially active hospitality. Just before this story of Mary and Martha in the Gospel of Luke is the story of the Good Samaritan. They come one right after the other, and the Good Samaritan, that's a story about taking action, about being radically hospitable in an embodied and committed way. And then in Acts 6-3, we have a story about the early church intentionally choosing seven leaders who are appointed to the task of hospitality. The church picks these seven ministers who are charged with doing exactly what Martha here is trying to do with feeding the community and making sure that everyone, especially the widows and the poor, are given care. In Acts, we see that the church from its very founding recognized and needed to be comprised of both study and prayer, and fellowship and action. So Jesus is Obviously not against active discipleship nor radical hospitality. So what then is this text saying? What point is Jesus trying to make in his comments to Martha? I believe that Jesus is getting into the nature of hospitality, the nature of ministry. He recognizes that Martha is performing a hospitable and necessary act of service. She provides essential nourishment and rest to the disciples. However, he also recognizes that in this moment her hospitality is coming from a place of anxiety. Martha, he says, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. He can see that she is frazzled so much so that she calls her sister out in front of everyone. Jesus can see that Martha's ministry is driven by anxiety and worry, and not by God's word. I think that with this text, God is trying to teach us that our hospitality, our ministry, must flow from the proper source. It must be inspired by the Spirit. This is critically important for two reasons. One, the source of our hospitality matters for the people that we serve, right? We will not be effective nor helpful in our ministry if it is driven solely by anxiety and pressure. That is a surefire way to miss out on God's message. In fact, I bet that all of us have seen this happen before in some way or in other churches or organizations that are so driven by this pressure to meet certain benchmarks or goals or so driven by this anxiety over appearance and status that they stray completely away from their foundational principles. When I first moved to New York City, I interned with this really great organization that served kids and teens from under-resourced areas of the cities. I was 
really excited about interning there. They had a great mission to engage youth through arts and creativity. And after a couple months there, I was invited to go with some of the youth and their mentors on a retreat out to um, the suburbs, to some of the woods around New York City. And I was really excited for this trip. They got in the van and everything was going so well. And then I was shocked when the first night I was told I needed to keep the kids outside for about an hour and a half while all the adults had a wine and cheese reception. <laughs> and so it's, it's fall. It's kind of cold and it's dark. And these kids are not used to being in the woods. And they're really scared. They keep saying, Sarah, Sarah, what, what if there's deer?
It takes a village, that's the saying, right? It takes a village, it takes a community, it takes a church. And in this text, God is also reminding Martha and reminding us that we need to trust that the dinner is going to get made. That if we stay connected to the source and we share the load, if we balance out that Martha and the Mary within us, all the work will get done. Because you never know. Perhaps Jesus' next words, the ones that aren't captured in the gospel, perhaps the next words are when Jesus turns to Peter or John or to Martha's brother Lazarus and says, My dear friend, tonight you are needed in the kitchen. You're going to need to. Amen. Amen. 